Hello and welcome to The Report, Cal State Fullerton's premier source for news, views, and info. I'm Alyssa Ruiz. I'm Shannon McKercher. And I'm Leslie Duarte. So guys, we're halfway through the semester. How's everything going? Midterms? I'm super excited. It's my last year at Cal State Fullerton. Same. So my last fall Counting semester. Counting down the weeks. I know, <laughs> but midterms have been crazy. Very so. overwhelmed, and <laughs> wow. I can't wait to be done. But I know. I'm getting through the it. The holidays are coming. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. Yes. So this semester, I only had one midterm, oh one gosh. test, <laughs> and I did pretty good on it. So good I'm job. pretty excited about good that. Job. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the tragic shooting in Las Vegas and gun control regulations. Plus, we'll be bringing you the latest report on California being a sanctuary state, a bill signed by Governor Jerry Brown to protect immigrants. And finally, we'll be bringing you some of the latest on local and CSUF news. All this and more on today's episode of The Report. <laughs> Before we delve into our first hot topic, we'd like to invite you to be a part of the discussion on this semester season. Click on the link in the caption of any of our report episodes to fill out a secure Google form with your opinion on any controversial issue that we've talked about now or in the past, as many of these issues are reoccurring and evolving, ranging from gun control to abortion, climate change, or the state of politics right now. All we ask is to please keep it civil. Tragedy struck Las Vegas last Sunday when a shooter opened fire into an open-air concert from a hotel window. 58 were left dead and more than 500 were injured in what is now called Modern America's deadliest mass shooting. The motive is still unknown, but the assailant, a 64-year-old man, shot himself before the SWAT team burst into the hotel room. The shooter had 23 guns in his room, including several assault rifles and ammunition. Lawmakers now want to ban devices that make legal guns fire like automatic weapons. Automatic weapons are legal if they are made before 1986 and are heavily regulated by the federal government. But a device called a bump stock can be bought for $200 and is legal. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is dismissing any kind of gun legislation, stating that it is not the time to turn a tragedy into a political agenda. But even with the possibility of a bill passing, Bump stocks have already sold out on several retailer websites. Now, this is not an easy topic for us to discuss. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching the news um, the day after this had happened, I literally felt sick to my stomach. Um, this is not something we want to see happen again um, in our country. So I want to ask you, because once again, the issue of gun control has been brought up. Do you guys think gun control can help eliminate mass shootings from occurring? Well, various efforts to tighten the string with the mass shootings have been brought up over and over. Orlando last year in 2012, um, the elementary school shooting. And I think it's time now that we need to put regulations. I don't think taking away the Second Amendment is going to necessarily stop these shootings. But putting re regulations, I mean, Las Vegas is, you can they have the least restrictive gun laws of our country. You can have an open carry. It's legal, it's legal to have open carry in the state without a permit. And for such a high volume um, place that people visit and, you know, there's a lot of tourists there. They really need to put a regulation on this. I mean, what is it going to take? You know, what's uh, it's just really heartbreaking for me. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, we have. Once again, we're talking about a mass shooting, and then right after, we're talking about gun control. And what Mitch McConnell said about it's not the time to talk about politics and turn it into agenda, it's actually, it's too late to talk about it. We should have talked about this when it happened last year, when last year was the greatest mass shooting, mm -hmm. you know? And so now we see this happen all the time in media. Um, mass shooting happens, people start talking about gun control, we forget about it, nothing happens, NRA gives them Congress a check. We forget about it until again, we have to talk about tragic events like this. And it's not fair, it's not fair. No, it's, it's almost like what more needs to happen 
to open people's minds, you know, and I think the biggest misconception with gun control is people literally think that, you know, they're going to get their guns physically taken away from them. That's not the discussion. That's not going to happen. It can't happen. Um, I want to go ahead and bring up and uh, read the Second Amendment to you guys, because this is kind of what, you know, this is why this is such a big issue, because we do have the right to bear arms and and people feel so protected, you know, and close to that uh, that amendment. So uh, that, that's why it's such a big controversy. So the Second Amendment, quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, end quote. Now, this was written over 200 years ago. Things have changed since then. Technology has advanced. Guns have advanced. I don't think our founding fathers wrote this, you know, so people could uh, feel the need to own machine guns and, you know, automatic and semi-automatic weapons that were designed to kill, just to kill dozens of people quickly, you know? Something needs to happen because we can't just keep letting things like this occur. Like you said, just last year was the deadliest mass shooting in, um, in modern America. Well, now it's this year. What's going to happen next year? How many more people need to die? And I... I completely agree with you. I think the Second Amendment is an American right to own guns. Everybody, nobody, nobody is telling people that we want to take your guns away. All we're saying is, hey, you regulate other things way more than you regulate gun control. How about we give it a try and start giving people more uh, do's and don'ts on what you can and can't do with your guns. That's all we're saying. We just want a safer community. Right. And people can own their guns. And the shooter had 12 of the 23 had bump stocks. He legally got these weapons. And that and is just the horrifying that's part what's of it all. horrible to me. And he also had a bomb in his car. What would he have done with that? So it's like, I know obviously taking away the Second Amendment, maybe it probably wouldn't have prevented it, but what else would he have used? He would have used something else that was legal. I mean, he, he did everything right to get these guns. None of you, everything he did. And it just, it breaks my heart because... Yeah, there definitely um, is a debate on, well, this guy is the exception. He doesn't have any mental illness. He doesn't, he had all the right to own all those guns. The problem is that he had all the right to own all those guns. Right. And, and he still did this. And there wasn't a red flag or something put up. That's what really frustrates me. In these gun stores in Nevada where he bought, he bought 33 guns within a year, 33 rifles. Like, why wasn't there a red flag put up? Like, hey, th there's something missing here. You know, and I think the Seminem Second Amendment um, is important to our Constitution. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, there was oppression from the government, and people needed to protect themselves. We're in a different place now. I agree. You know, we're not a regulated militia. We're individuals. And the stance is always, well, I need to protect myself. You don't need to protect yourself with a semi-automatic weapon. You just don't, okay? And if it's about self-defense then um, we right. can figure out a way that is looking at both sides and find something that is in common that we can all work and, with. And I, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's good. No, but bringing up, you know, self-defense, a lot of people argue, you know, we need more guns. In fact, you know, if everyone were to just be able to carry a gun with them at all times, then, you know, they could take down the shooter quickly. In Las Vegas, what would someone, you know, enjoying this music festival with a gun, what would they have been able to do with that gun to to shoot the the shooter 400 plus yards away, 32 floors up and in a hotel even room? Even police, their guns were kind of useless with that, and they didn't want the crowd to think that they were involved. Even people that had weapons, that were the crew members of the stage, they were like, we had guns, but if we start shooting, people are going to think that we're part of this attack. And what's also upsetting is that, I mean, it's hard when every state is just so different. I mean, I don't know if we'd ever be able to come up with a law that's universal. I but, think that's what needs but that's, to happen. You know, Vegas is this. California, obviously, we can't mm -hmm. have. You, there's no open carry. But Vegas, one of the least strict Texas. So this is, what's going to stop someone from, you know, buying a legal gun in Nevada, driving over to California and, you know, and then committing a mass shooting? He they bought the gun legally. You can have a gun in Vegas in a bar with open alcohol. I mean, you can walk into a casino and you can have your gun. I didn't know that. 
Yeah, giving more people more guns is not going to solve the issue. I mean, but absolutely, we not. cannot. Like you, you brought up a really good point. And actually, the Washington Post in 2015 found that at the time there were more guns in America than there were actual civilians, and that number was uh, 310 million guns um, compared to the U.S. census at the time. And you know, it doesn't help. It doesn't help because. Um, <laughs> Like you said, having more guns, what do you do for somebody right. who's up in, like, right. the rooftop of a hotel? And sadly, exactly. though, taking away those guns aren't going to stop these people from killing. That's what's really sad about it, too. I mean, they're going to find other ways, but I think that having a regulation at least would would put the probability down. You know, if it's harder to get this rifle, you know, like, he got everything legally, it it, it would decrease the chances, I think. You know... I say we give it a try. You know, we haven't given gun control a try. Mm -hmm. We keep talking about that's not going to fix it. That's not going to solve the problem. Well, we don't know what else to do. So how about we try this? It's not going to hurt anybody. And if we don't like it, then we amend different things right. and, and change and things. And putting it on the bump stock, I think, is a good idea. That's and good I know stuff. that both sides have been talking yeah. about it. And we'll just have to wait and see what they say. Yeah. And you can buy it for $200. I mean... You know, it's a slow process, right. but I hope... We don't have to have another fatal mass shooting occur before we do something to change this. Exactly. California Governor Jerry Brown signed a sanctuary state bill that extends protections for immigrants living in the United States illegally. The bill blocks police from asking about their immigration status or participating in federal immigration enforcement activities in most cases starting January 1st, 2018. In a written statement, Brown stressed that, quote, these are uncertain times for undocumented Californians and their families, and this bill strikes a balance that will protect public safety while bringing a measure of comfort to those families who are now living in fear every day, end quote. Meanwhile, members of federal immigration agencies have also voiced their concern that by passing this bill, California has chosen to prioritize politics over public safety. California is home to an estimated 2.3 million undocumented immigrants. The newly passed bill gives the state another tool in its defiance of the Trump administration. Well, what do you guys <laughs> think about the SB 54? I think um, I was reading a lot of articles and the immigrant community is happy about this because it gives them a peace of mind. Um, since the Trump administration took office, there was a constant fear and a very high rise in deportations. And, you know, the immigrant community was happy with this. They, they thought this was something that gave them back peace of mind and they were able to go to school, go to work without the fear that if I get pulled over for running a red light or for a speeding ticket, it might be the end of my life here in America. Right. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, it is great. You know, it protects the innocent and hardworking immigrants who I love, you know, being here in my state. At the same time, it grants that same protection to criminals. There are people out there who now fear that crime rates, crime rates will go up because of this protection that they are given. Right. It's, a, it's an active yeah. opposition against the federal law. So, But I think California is the first state to kind of voice their opinion. Hey, we're not going to follow Trump administration. It's, it is a... It Going back to politics. Alyssa's point, I think it's a false narrative because when immigrants in general have lower crime rates than American citizens because they don't want, and this is undocumented immigrants, they don't want to be caught up in the police. They don't want to run a red light. They always wear their seat belts. They try to stay under the radar as much as possible. Um, and it's also a false narrative because when you have a crime in a neighborhood, and you have the oppression of um, uh, the police coming to target undocumented immigrants, undocumented immigrants are less likely to cooperate with police because they're afraid that they might be asked their status. When you give them this peace of mind, like the spill has, um, Immigrants are more likely to cooperate with police knowing that, hey, we want to live in a safe neighborhood, right. too. We're not criminals, but we know who did the crime. Here's the information that you need. That, and it really kind of ties sheriff's hands because they're they're caught in a situation where it's like, so we, we can't follow this law. So now California is different from every other state. And I think other states will follow eventually, but California is the first state to do this. So it's really going to be harder for law enforcement. So what the law actually is doing is it's 
giving federal federal law is federal law all across um, the United States. If ICE comes into a jail or a prison, they can themselves look into who is undocumented and deport them back to their country. What this law is saying is that local and state government will not do federal um, federal government's job, which is deport people back to their country. That is federal government's job, and they can do that, but we're not going to um, do that for them. Yeah, you know, people are always going to be worried about the things that can go wrong, but I do think this is still great. Um, and like you said, you know, California is the first state to do this. And I love that. It's almost like, you know, our state is fighting back against the Trump administration and, you know, coming out and saying, you know, we're going to protect our own. And, and I love that. And they did make provisions that would make hospitals, schools, safe zones for undocumented immigrants. So that is also, that's actually a pretty cool thing, too. You know, it, it'll be interesting seeing um, moving forward how other states are going to follow, because this is nevertheless controversial, especially with the administration today, very anti-immigrant. You're going to see a lot of um, debate over this and seeing states follow or states take a different stance. Now turning to local news, a fast moving brush fire broke out the, near the 91 freeway on Monday morning. The fire quickly moved across 7,000 acres. Firefighters evacuated more than 5,000 homes in the Anaheim Hills area. The cause of the fire is still unknown, but it did start near another fire that began earlier this month. As of Tuesday morning, the fire was 5% contained, and at least 4,000 area residents have been impacted by the fire. Fire officials said the Canyon Fire 2 spread fast to sustained winds of 30 miles per hour. Mandatory evacuations have been ordered for homes west of the 241 toll road, south of Santa Ana Canyon Road, and east of the Weir Canyon Road, with an extension to the city of Orange. Governor Jerry Brown has declared a state of emergency for the California. At CSUF, University Police Captain Scott Wiley indicated no cause for alarm on campus, but University Police will be watching the fire. Tens of thousands of young immigrants who were eligible to renew their protection from deportation appear to have missed the deadline. Federal officials said on September 6th that so far they've received around 122,000 applications. About three-fourths of those applicants are eligible immigrants. Under a phase-out plan announced by the president last month, more than 150,000 young people covered by Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, whose permits were set to expire before March 5th, were given a chance to submit renewals, provided they arrive by October 5th. And now turning to campus news, on September 20th, CSU of College Republicans Club announced that Milo Yiannopoulos was officially booked for his appearance on campus on Halloween night. To address conflicting opinions, Dean of Students Holly Hunt sent out a campus-wide message Quote, first, I want to reassure you that our university's top priority is to safeguard the physical safety of all students, faculty, and staff. We are committed to providing a violence-free academic environment grounded in the mutually respectful exchange of ideas. The conflicting feelings and opinions about this event within our community, no matter where we stand on this issue, it's important that we all continue to reach higher by upholding our campus values of diversity, inclusion, and tolerance, end quote. A new fitness program is on its way to Cal State Fullerton in spring 2018. On October 4th, the Titan Student Center Board of Trustees voted unanimously to approve bringing the F45 training workout program to CSUF. The program is a high-intensity circuit training workout that aims to reach students who have little time to exercise. The program is named for its 45-minute, quote, functional training, end quote, courses. It offers daily workouts through the instructional video. The program will be free to students for the first year after registration, but will have an instructional fee of $20 per semester after that. Well, that's all the time we have for today on The Report. Stay tuned for more news, views, and info. I'm Leslie Duarte. I'm Shannon McCurcher. And I'm Alyssa Ruiz. Stay fresh, Fullerton.